Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel from Evelyn and Peter, and today I have this super cute, cozy cardigan to share with you guys. I'm super excited to kick off 2023 with this um, pattern, and I hope you guys love it just as much as I do, so I'm gonna stand up to give you a better look. I have not named this one yet. I'm waiting to go check on the names on my Instagram post. You know I like to do my contests on there, but it uses the same stitch that I used in my winter moonlight set that I released at the end of 2022. Um, it kind of looks like a mini waffle stitch from far away, but it's not. Um, it is the sedge stitch, and it has pockets it has a similar style and fit to the stony shore cardigan and then you can easily adjust the length on yours if you like your cardigans longer or shorter you can easily adjust that for this pattern as well um, the pattern is free on my blog and sizes extra small through 5x so i will link that in the description i always recommend following along with my blog blog post if you are um, using this video tutorial to make your cardigan it will have all the exact um, stitch counts row counts everything you need to know for all of the sizes is on that blog post so follow along with that and then i also have this as a line brand kit and i will link that as well i like to recommend the line brand kit if you plan on purchasing new yarn to make this cardigan anyways then you want to use the same yarn as me the heartland yarn then i always recommend getting the kit because it's the best deal they always have lots of frequent sales on there so you can grab it at like 35 percent off and then it comes with all the yarn you need to make for your size of the cardigan and then they throw in a free copy of the digital download of my pattern so i will link to that in the description and then it's also available in my etsy shop and in my ravelry shop um, I don't think there's really much to know other than that and I will link everything for you guys if you have any specific questions you can email me um, if you're asking them in the comments on YouTube I don't see all of those you can if you want and I know there's lots of awesome people on YouTube that answer those questions and help each other out in the community but if you have a specific question about one of my patterns you can email me as well and it's a better chance that I will see it and answer you. So I hope you guys like this design and um, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe so I can give you guys more free tutorials and I will catch you guys in the next So to video. get started, you're going to need some worsted weight yarn. I'm using Line Brand's Heartland yarn in the color Wolf Trap and all of the exact yardage requirements for all of my sizes, extra small through 5X, are available on my blog for free and I'll link that in the description. And then you're also going to need a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, scissors, a needle, some stitch markers, and then a measuring tape. So each of the panels that we're going to be making start off the exact same way. We're going to be making two front panels, a back panel, and then two sleeves. They're all going to start at the bottom where the ribbing is, and then we're going to be working in rows um, from the bottom up. So I'm going to be showing how to do that using one of the front panels here. Um, and then that way you can go back and also make a back panel as well, already knowing how to do that. Or you could start off with the back panel here. It really doesn't matter. Um, I'm just going to be showing an example from the front panel, but if you want to start with the back panel like it is written out in the pattern, you can do that as well because it's the exact same. So start off with a slip knot, and then you, at this point, you can either chain 11 or you can do a foundation single crochet. So I'm going to do a foundation single crochet here. We're going to start off with two chains, and then into that first chain that we just made, we're going to be working our stitch so rotate slightly and in that back bump insert your hook and then yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over pull through the first loop only and then yarn over pull through both loops and that is one foundation single crochet again you're going to insert your hook into the bottom of that stitch you just made yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through one loop and then yarn over pull through both loops so you need to do this a total of 10 times so that you have a total of 10 single crochet after row one and if you are not comfortable doing the foundation single crochet you can go watch um, one of my other tutorials that does it a bit slower if you want to learn and if not you can just go ahead and chain 11 and then in the second chain from the hook work a single crochet and then work one single crochet in each of the remaining chains all the way down for a total of 10 single crochet 
Okay, so that completes row one, and now we're going to be doing row two, and for row two, it's what we're going to be doing throughout the rest of the ribbing. So go ahead and chain one and turn your work. So depending on what size you're making, you'll have a different amount of ribbing rows here. So make sure you're following along with your size and the written pattern. But as for now, every size is the same. So insert your hook into the first stitch and work a regular single crochet. And then into the following stitch, you're going to be working in the back loop only. So the loop that's furthest away from you and then work a single crochet. And then you're going to do this all the way across the row, working one single crochet into each stitch in the back loop only until you reach the last stitch of the row. And then when you get to the last stitch, you're just going to work a regular single crochet into both the front and the back loop like you did in the beginning. And that completes row two. Just chain one and turn your work. And now you'll be repeating that throughout the rest of the ribbing rows until you have the correct amount of rows for your size. Again, if you're making the back panel here, just be following along with the back panel rows. Um, it's obviously going to be a lot longer than what mine is going to be since I'm showing you on the front panel, but other than the amount of rows, everything is going to be the same at this point. Um, so go ahead and work your ribbing rows following along with the amount needed for your size, which you can find in the written pattern that is free on my blog and linked in the description. Okay, so that completes our ribbing. Again, I'm doing the front panel of the size small here, so I have a total of 34 rows of ribbing, and then obviously it'll change depending on the size that you're making and whether you're on the back panel or front panel right now. But everything is exactly the same, just difference is the amount of rows or stitches depending on your size. So now we are going to be working along the ends of the ribbing rows here to start row one of the main body of the panel. So I just like to lift up my um, stitch here a little bit to give me some height. I'm not going to chain at the beginning of row one. I'm just going to insert my hook into the side of that ribbing row that we just completed and then work a single crochet stitch. And then you're going to do the same into the next. Just work one single crochet into the end of the row, into the third as well. And you're just going to do this all the way across the row. So you need one single crochet into the end of each of the ribbing rows all the way across. Your stitch count will be the same as your ribbing row count. So I will have a total of 34 single crochet at the end of this row. So go ahead and just work your way across one single crochet per row. Okay, so that completes row one, and I just wanna point out that this is the right side of our work, so you know that going forward. And now to continue, we are going to be starting row two, and row two is going to be the repeat row throughout the rest of this main body of the front and back panels and the sleeves as well. So for row two, you're going to start off by chaining one and turning your work. And then now we're going to jump right into the regular stitch repeat. This is the sedge stitch. So in the very first stitch that you made, you're going to work a single crochet. And then in the same stitch, work a half double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. And then in the same stitch as well, you're also going to work a double crochet stitch. So we have a single, a half double, and then a double all into the same spot. And then you're going to be skipping two. You're always gonna skip two in between. And then in the following, work a single crochet, a half double, and then a double. And we're just going to be repeating this across the row. So again, skip two, it's really important. You don't mess up the skipping here so we can um, start off this row correctly. And then the following stitch, work a single crochet, a half double crochet, and a double crochet. We're going through both the front and the back loops. And we're just going to do this all the way across. So skip two and then repeat that again, working your way across the row. And then I will show you guys what to do at the end of the row and how to finish it off. 
Okay, so now we're at the end of the row. I have three stitches remaining. We're going to skip those two stitches and then just work one single crochet into the final stitch here at the very end. So it's important not to forget to do that last single crochet and that completes row two. Um, your stitch count will be the same as your single crochet row. So I still have a total of 34 stitches combined singles half doubles and doubles and now that row that we just did is what we're going to be repeating throughout the rest of the panel so chain one turn your work and in that first stitch work a single crochet a half double crochet and a double crochet and then go ahead and skip over two and then in the following stitch work a single crochet half double and double and it's easy to keep track of where you are so that you don't um, mess up the stitches that you're skipping as you're always working your single your half double and your double into the single crochet from the row below so that's a good thing to keep in mind as you go if you see find yourself working it into the double or the half double you know that you're in the wrong spot and you can go ahead and fix that before continuing on so just go ahead and work your piece work your row all the way across and then work your piece up to the correct amount of rows for your size um, so if you're doing the back panel here um, I will go ahead and show you what that looks like when you're done so you're just going to be repeating row two over and over and over again until you have the right amount right amount of rows for your size so for the size small I have a total of 61 rows here um, for the back panel so you're just going to go ahead and repeat that till you have 61 rows if you're making the size small it'll be different if you're doing a different size but this is what your back panel will look like and then once you're done with your back panel you can go ahead and go back and re-watch the video if you need to remember how to do any of this down here the ribbing or anything and then you can start your front panel as well after that so I'm going to continue on with the front panel that I have been showing throughout the video because I'm going to show you how to do the pockets and everything as well. So you can go back and work the back panel and then come back and watch the front panel and both front panels will be exactly the same. So I will meet you back here um, with the front panel pocket portion. I'm going to keep working on mine until I hit row 16 so I'm going to complete 16 rows total and then come back for row 17 of the front panel so I can show you how to do the pocket okay so now I've just completed 16 total rows on the front panel here so the width of your front panel will be different depending on the size you're making but all of the sizes should be um, on row 17 starting row 17 here to create the pocket opening so if you don't want to do pockets you can just continue on as normal working your stitches across and skip this part um, that will totally work as well but if you are wanting to do pockets like um, in my cardigan that are in the pictures um, make sure you don't skip over this part so we're going to do a single crochet half double crochet and double crochet into the first spot like normal and then skip two like normal and do that again and depending on your size you might have another um, section of single half double and double so it just depends on your size depending on how many clusters you'll have before we work this space but once you have the amount for your size it's written in the pattern you're going to skip two and work a single crochet and then all of the sizes um, will be exactly the same right here that you start off with a single crochet so don't finish with a half double and double and then instead of um, working your stitches across we're going to make a chain space so we have two clusters of the single half double and double skip two, work a single crochet and then now we're going to do our chain space across so depending on your size you might have a chain 17 a chain 20 or a chain 23 for the pocket opening I'm doing the size small and I have a total of 20 chains here and then whatever amount of chains that you chained for your size you're going to skip that same amount of stitches below so you want to count 20 stitches and skip over all 20 of those and then just work a single crochet into the following stitch and it should be a single crochet from the row below that you're working into and then continue with your half double and double and then you just finish with the regular stitch repeat all the way across the row so depending on your size you might have to do some more stitches to reach the end 
for the size small, I'm just going to do another set and then skip two and work a single crochet into the final stitch. So it's just like you have been, just as normal like in row two. Um, the only difference here is we are chaining 20, skipping 20, and then again, it will be a different amount of chains depending on your size as well. So that was the pocket hole that we made in row 17. And now for row 18, you're just going to go back into the regular stitch repeat of working the single, the half double and the double and skipping two. And you're just going to do that like normal all the way across. When you reach the chain space, you're going to treat the chains just like you would um, any of the other stitches. So don't work into the actual chain space, but you want to work into the actual chains. So you can see here, I'm going to work a single, a half double and a double into this last single crochet. And then I'm just going to skip over two chains and work into that following chain as normal. So I skipped over two and then I'm working into the actual chain, not into the chain space and just working a single, a half double and a double all into the same. And then I'm just gonna do this all the way across the row, skip two chains, work into the next. And then when you um, complete working into the chains and when you get back to the stitches, just continue like normal. We're just treating them exactly as we would as a stitch from the row below. So just go ahead and work your way all the way across um, to complete row 18. And then once you work your way across, now we're just back to normal and we're going to be continuing a row two repeat throughout the rest of the front panel. So a total of 61 rows, just like the back panel. So I have a total of 61 rows here. I just completed my first front panel. There's the pocket. And now once you have this complete, you wanna leave um, your tail of yarn here long enough to sew this last row of the front panel to the back panel at the shoulders. So go ahead and you can fasten off, but just leave a tail long enough for sewing. And then you need to go back and make a second front panel. So go ahead and go back, make a second one, and then I will meet you back here to do the sleeves. Okay, so now we have the back panel done and both front panels done and we can move on to the sleeves. So the sleeves are just slightly different. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the difference in those compared to the other panels. I'm going to start off um, doing the foundation single crochet just like I did with the other panels. So you can go back and watch that if you need a slower version or go to my other tutorial or if you don't wanna do the foundation single crochet, you can go ahead and chain 11 and work one single crochet in the second chain from the hook and back down for a total of 10 single crochet. So we're going to be doing the ribbing the same. So I have those foundation single crochets. I'm just going to chain one, turn my work, work one single crochet into the first stitch and then a single crochet into each of the stitches across working in the back loop only. And then when we get to the final stitch, just work a regular single crochet and then go ahead and chain one, turn your work and repeat that for the amount of ribbing rows for your size. I'm making a size small and I'm going to have a total of 28 rows of ribbing for the sleeve. So go ahead and work your ribbing rows and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so now I have my ribbing rows for the cuff of the sleeve complete. And this portion here is what is going to be slightly different than on the other panels. So depending on your size, you might start off with one single crochet into the end of the first row, or you might start off with two. So pay close attention to that. It'll either be one or two depending on your size. For size small, I start off with one into the end of the first row, and then I'm going to work two single crochet into the end of every single row all the way across. So I start off with one, and then now I'm working two into the same stitch or end of ribbing row, because it's not technically a stitch, but you're gonna be two in the same spot all the way across. So Make sure you pay close attention on the written pattern. If you start off with a one single crochet or you just go directly into two single crochet, that'll be the only difference. But after that, all of the sizes will be working two single crochet into all of the ends of the um, remaining rows across. And once you have that complete, your um, sleeve will look wavy and crazy and kind of funky and that is okay. It's supposed to look like that. You didn't mess up. And then when you get to the end, you're just going to chain one and turn. 
And then we're going to go directly into the regular stitch repeat all the way across, just like for all of the other panels. So that was the only difference was the single crochet row and that we are doubling up the stitches there instead of just doing one per row, we're doing two per row or starting off with one at the end of the first row and finishing with two per row. So for the size small, I had a total of 55 um, single crochet stitches for row one. And now for the rest of the rows, my stitch count will be the same as that at 55. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and continue with the regular stitch repeat and repeating row two for a total amount of 43 rows. And so this is what your sleeve will look like when you are done. Just make sure you're double checking your stitch and row count for your size. And then when we fold it over, it gives it a nice um, tighter cuff and a little bit of a bubble sleeve or balloon sleeve look to it. And then you need to go back and remake this whole thing all over again, exactly the same. When you fasten off, make sure you leave a tail of yarn here that is long enough to sew um, the last row of your sleeve to your front and back panels. So go ahead and fasten off and then go back and remake the same thing for a second time. Okay, now once we have all of our panels complete, we have to make the little pocket panels that go on the inside of our cardigan to close off the pocket. You're going to grab a new piece of yarn and just start off with a slip knot. And then for this part, you can either do a starting chain or a foundation single crochet. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you with the starting chain. Um, I'm going to chain 23, and then in the second chain from the hook, I'm just going to work single crochets back, down, and across. So I'm just showing a tiny little portion here. Instead of working up all of those single crochet and chains, I'm just showing you a little mini version sample. So just chain the correct amount for your size. The pockets will be um, slightly different size depending on which size cardigan you're making, so make sure you check that. The size small is a total of 22 single crochet stitches for row one. So you can either do 22 foundation single crochet or chain 23 and then work one single crochet into the second chain from the hook and across the row. So this is a very simple um, piece of the cardigan. That's why I'm not gonna show you the entire square. It's just single crochet rows. So when you get to the very last chain here, finish with a single crochet and then you can just chain one and turn your work. And then you're just going to work regular single crochet stitches across, working through both the front and the back loop. And you're just making a, um, basically a swatch of a single crochet uh, row. So go ahead and do that. This is what it's going to look like. So this is 22 single crochets and a total of 24 rows. Um, so the rows will be the same amount for all of the sizes but the stitches will be a different amount. And if you need to adjust it, it's really simple to do that as well. Um, if your pocket square isn't tall enough or maybe it's too tall, you can add rows or take out rows, but you want it to look kind of like this. It's going to be a little bit wider than what your pocket opening is, but it's going to um, start right at the top of the ribbing rows and go up to um, the top of the chain hole that we have there. So go ahead and make two of those and then we can get to seaming our cardigan together, which I'm going to show you right here. So you're gonna place your back panel out in front of you. You want it um, right side facing up. So again, like I said in the beginning of the video, row one is your right side. So you can see um, the correct side of row one is facing me and it's facing up. And then you're going to take your front panel, doesn't matter which one, and place it right side facing down. So you want the right sides of the cardigan, which will essentially be the outside that you're showing everybody of the cardigan once we're done here. So um, place the right sides together and then you can use whatever whatever method you prefer to seam your pieces together. I like to use my hook and slip stitch across, so I'm gonna show you that. Um, you're just gonna line up your front and back panel and then make sure you're not skipping any stitches. Make sure your stitch one is aligned with stitch one, the second one is aligned with the second one, the third with the third, etc. cetera. Um, and then in the first stitch that I slip stitched together, I worked through both loops and then 
Um, if I can even get the yarn through here, I'm going to <laughs> do it through the outer loops only for the um, remaining way across. I just like the way it looked better after it was seamed. So in the outer loop only here to the loops that are on the outside, I just insert my hook into both of those and then yarn over and pull through and pull through the loop on your hook. So you're just slip stitching across, making sure you don't skip any stitches as you go and making sure that the stitches are aligned correctly. And then just do this across until you reach the last stitch of your front panel. And then you can go ahead and fasten off. So go ahead and slip stitch, or if you're using a needle, you can um, sew those pieces together as well, whichever method you prefer doing. I also wanted to point out that I did steam block my panels before sewing them together here. So you can do that as well, um, especially if you um, are slightly off from finished measurements. You want to make sure you steam block those pieces so that they are the correct size um, before seaming them together. Or if you prefer doing it after everything's sewn together, that's totally fine too. So after you fasten off on that first side, you need to repeat it on the same side. And because um, the tail is on the opposite side of the panel for this one, uh, because we have both right sides facing, um, you'll have to count the stitches over on your back panel. So the same amount of stitches that you have in the last row of your front panel, you need to count those over on your back panel so that you're starting on the correct stitch. You wanna make sure um, that you are not skipping or um, pulling your front panel too far over. So just line it up correctly and then go ahead and slip stitch or sew your front panel across. Okay, and then once you have both of the front panels seamed to the back panel, we need to seam our sleeves on doing the same exact thing. So I have my back and front panels laying um, wrong side up here and then I have my sleeve um, lined up evenly. I want to show you that the shoulder seam here should be directly in the center of your sleeve. So you want to um, count exactly halfway across your sleeve and then make sure it's lined up with the center shoulder seam. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and place some stitch markers here to keep everything in place. You want to make sure that the edges of the sleeve are at the same row on both the front panel and back panel so that it's nice and even. And then again, you can either use your hook and slip stitch across, or you can use a needle and sew across. Um, I'm going to use my hook again. And this time I'm putting it through both the front and the back loops. And because um, the uh, edges of the uh, panels do not have an actual stitch that you're working into for the um, front and back panel, you're just going to be working it into uh, the edges of the rows. So I'm working my hook through the last row of the stitches on the sleeve and then just lining it up evenly and putting it through the ends um, of the rows for the front and back panel and slip stitching across. So it does not have to be perfect when you're working it into the ends of the rows wherever it just looks best you might have to pull it back out and readjust um, just try and keep it nice and even as you go and that's what the stitch markers are for so once you reach that uh, middle stitch of the sleeve it's lined up evenly uh, with the shoulder seam and just go ahead and work all the way across and removing the stitch markers as you go and then you need to go ahead and repeat that on the other side as well so that both of the sleeves are seamed together and then once we have that done, we just need to seam the um, from the cuff to the underarm and the underarm down to the bottom hem. So you can attach your yarn on either side. It doesn't really matter um, where you start. We just need to make sure we seam those portions together as well. So I'll just show you really quick what I did. I'm just going to take a fresh piece of yarn and then that very... Um, last stitch of the cuff of the sleeve, insert my hook, and then slip stitch those ribbing rows together, and then make sure my rows on my sleeve are even. You can see like the ends of the rows of our main sedge stitch. Make sure that they're lined up evenly so that when you turn it right side out, the rows look nice and even and that the um, they're not all jumbled and like misaligned when you turn your cardigan out to wear it. So 
It's super simple, just doing the same as we have been. And again, you can use a needle here as well if you prefer that over slip stitching. So just go ahead and join your yarn at the bottom hem of your cardigan or at the cuff and then slip stitch to the underarm and then don't fasten off but continue from the underarm down to the hem or if you're doing it the opposite way when you reach the underarm continue down to the cuff of the sleeve and then you can go ahead and fasten off and repeat that on the other side as well so get both sides um, seamed up and then i'll show you what we have to do to finish off our cardigan Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do the trim really quick. Um, so turn your cardigan right side out. So now the seams are hidden on the inside. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to do the trim and then we will add our pockets in. Um, so you can take a fresh piece of yarn and just join it here at the bottom of the left panel. It's your right panel when worn. And you just slip stitch to join into that bottom stitch of the ribbing, chain one and then work one single crochet into each of those stitches of the ribbing and then when you reach the front panel you're just going to be working a single crochet into the end of each of the rows so just go ahead and work your way up the side of the front panel evenly spacing your single crochet um, the stitch count here really does not matter at all just try and keep your stitches even so if you find um, that your cardigan is starting to look wavy with the trim, you're gonna wanna pull that out and do less stitches. Um, and then if it looks like your single crochets are pulled too tight or puckered, um, you're gonna wanna add a little more if your stitches look like they're too large and pulling your rows together. Um, so you can see here, I'm just working them into the sides of the rows. So I worked through the ribbings and then I'm just gonna work them directly into the ends of the rows here. So I'm gonna work up the first front panel. When I get to the back neckline, I'm going to work across the back of the neckline, working one single crochet per stitch, and then down the sides of the rows on the other front panel until I reach the bottom corner um, of the ribbing on that other side over here. Okay, and then once I reach the other side, just chain one and turn, and then I'm going to be working my stitches in the front loop only here. So the loop that is closest to you is where you wanna insert your hook. So instead of working it through both the loops, just through one loop this time, the one closest to you. And we're gonna do this for all of the stitches all the way across and back to the other side where we had joined in. So we only have two rows for the trim. You could add more if you wanted to and just continue um, doing single crochet stitches in the uh, front loop for this one and then uh, back loop for the next one if you wanted the same look. Or if you just wanna stick to two rows like I did, just work one single crochet into each stitch front loop only. When you get to the other side, you can go ahead and fasten off and that completes the trim. Okay, so now we have our trim all finished and we just have to add in the pockets now. I've already added one in here and I'm going to show you how to do it on the other side. So make sure you don't sew through that, um, that front last row here at the bottom of the pocket opening. Make sure you don't accidentally stick your needle and close that pocket shut. We're only going to be working um, above the hole that we have. So above that chain space is where you're going to attach. And then you're going to attach on all of the other three remaining sides as well. So you can take your little single crochet swatch and place it on. Remember this is on the inside of the cardigan. And then um, for this spot, we're going to have to use our needle and sew the piece on. So I have my First row lined up with the ends of the ribbing rows. It's lined up directly on row one of the front panel. And then this row here is where we will be our attaching um, the top of the panel. So you wanna make sure um, that you're not doing it at the bottom of the chain space, but above it. So right above that chain 20 or however many you chained into those stitches that worked into the chain is where you're going to be attaching the top of the um, pocket and then um, the sides of the pocket, you'll just line it up evenly so that the whole chain space is covered and then you'll work straight down. You want to make sure it's nice and straight. And then the first row is going to be working into the single crochet row of the front panel. 
So I like to use my stitch markers and pin it all into place so we can make sure we're getting a nice and even um, line when we sew it together. And then I also like to leave this top portion the last spot that I sew. I just found it easier to uh, make sure everything was straight if that was the last spot that I sewed on. So I like to work down the left side here, across the bottom, up the right side, and then I finish off by sewing the top row last. So I'm just going to show you um, how to do that but just use your needle and attach it to the tail of yarn that you left on the pocket. If you didn't leave a tail long enough, you can just bring in a new piece of yarn as well. And then just sew down the side, making sure your stitches are nice and straight. So once you have that first pocket sewn on, go ahead and repeat it on the other side. You can see it looks like a nice and clean. You can't see any of the stitches on the front side. Make sure you're not pulling your needle all the way through and you're just picking up those insides of the stitches. And then after that, you just have to weave in any remaining ends. So just using your needle, you can go ahead and thread it back and forth through the stitches two or three times and then cut off the extra yarn. Um, do this with your cardigan right side or with your cardigan wrong side out so you can hide all those tails really well. And then that is it for this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and be sure to subscribe and ch um, come check out the next tutorial. Thanks so much for watching.